This is Twit. Uh, nobody is flying to join Google's flock, says The Verge. Firefox has already said we're not going to do it. Apple's Safari won't do it. Mozilla, Vivaldi, and Brave all out. <clears throat> In this article by Dieter Bone, he says Edge, but I have to say, when they asked Microsoft about Edge, their response was very equivocal. In fact, to the point where I feel like Microsoft was hedge was hedging their bets and said, yeah, we're going to wait and see. We might well use Flock. Uh, I, just as a point of information, Steve Gibson did a very, about half an hour on Flock yesterday on Security Now, which I encourage people to listen to. It's at the end of the show. He's uh, He says it's a good idea and it works as advertised, that it is privacy protecting and uh, it's very cleverly implemented to do that. Uh, I pointed out it's of course Google you know has to make advertising work so Google is for gonna, for itself and and many many others yeah so Google's kind of got to do the best it can to reassure people on privacy but still they have to give something to advertisers that's what I was just talking about and uh, what what Google did point out is that there are a number of categories that they don't sell ads against uh, including things like your mental state, uh, your previous incarceration, your whether you're pregnant, your he any health conditions. They don't sell ads against those, and Flock will not add those features to any of its cohorts. So that might have been a little bit uh, reassuring. Pregnancy um, is interesting because that's highly lucrative. Well, if you look at what like, they won't sell, I mean, liquor, pff, right? The stuff that Google won't do ads for is is actually a list of stuff that people buy ads ads for. <laughs> so I think this is why I feel like Google might be a little bit sincere in that they're trying to... We need to, to reinvent advertising. Yes. We need to get past what it was. Well, and, and if we're going to shoot down everything that comes up uh, just because it came from Google... Well, no, they're not shooting it down because it came from Google. Originally, an e factor. EFF shot it down originally because they want to stop the web being built on an ad supported model that I mean that that's their idea is that your data should not be your payment for serving the web we should come up with something better and it might be and something like I mean what we're doing well like um, with Club Twit, okay right. so then we end up with a world where everything's behind a paywall I wrote a, a tweet about this last week <laughs> that my dystopia is that everything <laughs> goes behind a paywall at, at major media and that uh, everybody has a sub stack and the only thing that's free is disinformation well, with, with crappy ads. I don't think, I think that's a little crazy. I think what's going to, I mean, like I, I tweeted just the other day, I realized I subscribe to 11 publications, which is insane. I spend about a thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Thank you. Very Thank odd. you. Yeah. But yeah. Thank well, you. No, I know. I'm, I mean, it's, it's my job. I mean, I do it because I run into paywalls all the time and, but it is frustrating also to try to I'm like you. People, like, yeah, I pay for to stuff. To link to people to content. Yeah, I pay for more stuff. I, I know don't think they I'd won't ever give Bloomberg any money, except that I have to use Bloomberg's materials on our shows. I, 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 give, I give Bloomberg It's money. 35 bucks anyway, a month, the and they have that gosh darn Bloomberg terminal. They make a lot of money. Well, Reuters <laughs> is going to charge that much, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Sorry, Reuters. Reuters. I like Reuters, but... So, so go ahead, Stacey. But I I'm think sorry. what's going to happen is we're going to reach a point where people start hitting all these paywalls and they experience the pain of that and we're going to come up with new models because they're going to be forced. Right. Remember, I mean, we always, this is what competition does. It create, you, you get this like pain point and then people will come out with like aggregators that are like of some sort and we'll, we'll get to that point. It's constantly evolving, and that's it good. That's what the web is. is. But that's exactly why we never want to get rid of the free tier, because I don't want to put everything. I don't. I didn't want to do yeah. a paywall per se. Mm -hmm. Now maybe that's crazy because this is this is patronage. This is support. This is help. This yeah. is fans. But this I know people will be involved. Financial sure. Times, for instance, you can't read their content unless you pay. Wall Street Journal, you can read some limited content, but not all of it unless you pay. Uh, new, you know. Paywalls are are definitely a thing. Is that because this idea of of freemium uh, doesn't work? No, because it's a winner take all I, market. One of my numbers below, which I will now sacrifice for the good of the show. Thank you, sir. Is uh, a a um, 
a view of all of the news sites that have over 100,000 subscribers. There's 28 of them adding up to 23 million worldwide, the English speaking world. That's a fraction, though, of the total. It's news nothing. Sites. It's nothing. nothing. Mm. And in the U.S., 63% of all subs go to three, count them, three publications. You know what they are. New York, New York Times, Times Post, Wall, Wall Street Journal. Yeah, yeah. And I and subscribe so to all three. it's a winner-take-all model. Wait, what was the third one? Wall Street Journal, Wall New York Street. Times, and Washington Post. Yeah. Oh, Washington. I have subscriptions. Um, yeah, them. so do I. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, so do I. I don't subscribe um, to any of those. Um, you're the common have, man. You're the real man. Yeah. Well, who but see, you, the thing is, to? I I I totally get having these paywalls up because it, ideally they're going to have legit content out there and legit information. But there's a lot of times that I've been able to click on some of these stories and get a partial view of whatever they're they're showing before hitting the paywall, and I'm like, this is bad, and it just doesn't <laughs> warrant. But and I'll bring this, I'll bring up this. There is a hazard. Knox Harrington in, the, in our IRC chat brings this up. If all the good content sites are paywalled, what will be left for for normal unpaying people to pay f to breed is link bait and crap. Exactly. exactly. But I'm seeing I'm seeing link bait from some of these reputable sources too. Oh yeah. And and that's why I'm like, Wait, you know, what, why, just, why are you even bother? It's not all crap. I mean, mine's free. It's more trade though. I get a lot of people who are cranky that my stuff is too uh, technical for them. Well, too um, bad. I mean, that. Well, I mean, but that's well, what you no, but do. This, so the point what is, you, what do they expect? The point, <laughs> people well, are just cranky. I gotta say, people are cranky about anything. They'll complain about anything. If you're not technical geez. enough, you'd get just as many people saying, "You need to be more technical." <laughs> yes, I, I, I get each week. I get someone telling me I'm too technical, right. and I get someone saying, "Thank you for explaining things so clearly." Exactly. So I take yeah. it all with a okay. Uh, you can't Word. please everyone. But I will say there there will always be, I, I do think there's always room for, I'll call it a trade like publication. Because the people, like uh, my advertisers are happy to reach the people who mm -hmm. are legitimately focused on my area. And I think there's areas where that model will work. I and think the so narrower, so that it breaks down. the narrower your niche and you have a very narrow niche the easier it is to do that. I think if you're general, it's harder, right? right? Because you general, don't have a natural audience. Like, or, yes. Yeah. That's well, you have a natural audience. It's just they're not lucrative. They're just like the, the it's common It's everybody. Man. Yeah. Right. Well, consider, consider what is considered a frequent user of the New York Times. They had to lower it from 20 pages a month to 10 pages a month to five or three. Wow. So that, means, that means people who are paying uh, you know, they can't get them to convert if they only come three to five times a month, three to five articles a month. Yeah. Um, what are people I'm, reading? I'm stunned. Well, there's all, okay, I, I happen to have in my hand. <laughs> oh, oh, what is this, paper. Professor? Okay, Senator McCarthy, go ahead. Excellent paper <laughs> yes. from um, three great researchers, Duncan Watts, David Rothschild, and Marcus Mobius, just published. And... Uh, it's about fake news. And they found that from 2017, there were 5,000 English language publications, academic papers about fake news. Uh, so they're, what they're saying is they think it's maybe a little overblown and, they, and what the research we need. But here's some data in this. News consumption is a small fraction of overall media consumption. 14% uh, of overall uh, news cons uh, media consumption is dedicated to news, right? 14%. Um, uh, less than 1% of regular news consumption and less than one-tenth of 1% 1 of overall media consumption could be considered fake. Three in four Americans spend less than 30 seconds a day reading news online, while almost half consume no online news whatsoever. Mm. So we're weirdos. 